Pete Calandra here. Today, I'd like to do a video with some MIDI editing tips for Pro Tools. When sketching out ideas for some of my film music, there are times when it is useful for me to write using an ensemble patch. I do this so that I can play with two hands on my MIDI keyboard. When playing chordal sections, this can be a quicker way for me to input the music. I can go back after I'm finished writing and separate out the different voices, assigning them to the individual instrument sections. Today's example uses orchestral strings, but this can be applied in many other situations. So as you can see here, I've got a passage I wrote and recorded that contains a five voice or five note per chord string pad, all played by an ensemble style string patch. Let me play that for you. To enhance this track when mixing, I like to separate it out into the individual parts. That would be first violin, second violin, viola, cellos, and basses. This way I can have more control over the volume of the individual voices in each chord, as well as other continuous controller information that can be used for adding expressivity to the piece. One way to do this is to hold down the shift key in the MIDI editor and using the grabber tool, select each note, then paste it onto the track you want. So here I am in the MIDI editor, and I'm holding down the shift key, and I'll just grab the first violin part. So I can click on the individual notes like this, or I can just simply use the grabber tool and just click and drag, selecting those. But see, sometimes if you're not accurate, you have to go back and unselect that one. So now I would copy this and I would paste it onto the first violin track. And there we have it. And then I can go through each of the voices in the chord and distribute them how I'd like them to be in the string section. Let me show you a different way for doing this in the edit window, not the MIDI editor page, but here in the edit window. The first thing I'll do is highlight this track and then select option Y on my Mac keyboard and then we come up with something in the event operations menu called select slash split notes. Another way to navigate to that window is to right click on this clip right here or hold down the control key and click. And then you'll scroll down to where it says event operations and select split notes. All right, so there are all sorts of functions that you can apply to notes in this window, but right now for today, we're gonna to focus on this one called top and this one called bottom. So, I know that every, no, every chord here in this chord progression, in this piece, in this section, this little passageway, or however you want to call it, contains five notes. For my violin, one, I would like to select the top one note and paste it onto this track. So I'm going to select the top note of each chord, and then you'll notice that the clip no longer is highlighted. That note is selected, trust me, because I'm going to do Command C and copy that note and then go back to the beginning of this track and paste it in there. And that was very quick. Now, for the second violin, I think I would like to have the next two notes down in each chord. So that would be the second from the top and the third from the top be in the second violin track. You could distribute chords like this however you want, but I'd like to do it this way. So I'm going to select the top three notes for each chord, apply, copy, Paste, highlight, select the top one note of each chord, apply, and delete. Now, I'm going to do something a little different for the viola. I want to select the second note from the bottom for the viola. So what I'll do first is select the bottom two notes of each chord, apply, copy, paste, and I'm going to paste it again on the cello track, and I'll show you why in a minute. So now I would like to take the bottom one note of this chord, apply and delete, and take the top note of this chord, apply and delete. Then I'm going to um, option drag this down to the bass track so that my cellos and my basses are playing the same thing. 
note. And then also to clean up the name on my cello track, I will do option shift three, and now the bass track is named the same as the title on this section of the edit page. So that's a quick way to do that, and quicker for me than being in the, the MIDI editor. So let me play this now. I've got this all assigned out, and there's some other stuff that we're going to want to do. But let me, let's play this. Oh, let's unmute this and do this. All right, so you can already hear that there are all these spaces in between the notes, and that's because I used a sustain pedal when playing the ensemble patch because some of the chords were a little too wide for me to play with my left hand in a legato fashion. So now we're going to do another one of the MIDI event um, operations. And what I'll do is I'm going to select all the tracks like this up to the last note. And I'm going to make the duration of every note end at the beginning of the following note. So how do I do that? All right, let me right click here and go to change duration. And this also has quite a, quite a few functions to it, but we're just going to work today on legato and we're going to set the gap to zero and we're going to apply. And then all of a sudden you see that everything's legato right now. All the notes are exactly the same duration and they end when the next note begins. So let's play that again. Okay, so that's getting better, but there's still something missing. So let's look at our string pad, uh, pad again. Let's go back here and let's look at something else. I had some modulation continuous controller drawn in, and in this string library, if you move the mod wheel up and down, it goes through the different intensities and different dynamic layers, not just getting louder, but get also changing in intensity from pianissimo all the way up to forte, so soft to loud. What you can do is you can copy that, select and copy, and then you can paste it, and it will not erase your track. So I'll just paste it onto each of these tracks to give me a starting point. And let me just mute this again and play this. Okay, so you see that's getting better already, but there's still a few things that I'd like to do to this. And the first thing being is that every chord starts at the beginning of the measure. So I'd like things to interleave a little bit. So how am I going to accomplish that? Well, that's very easy. Let's uh, go to the MIDI editor and let's turn on all of these. By clicking over here and not the first string patch. Okay, so here we see our entire passage here. And what I'll do is I'm going to select these guys and do Option Shift 3, and that'll heal that separation. And I'll do the same thing here and here, here, and then here I'm going to do it here. And now I have a few sections where the sustain notes reattack, like I would right here, or they are held through the bar like here. And that will actually sound nice. And I have much more control because I can change the volume of any individual voice very easily and there's a bigger stereo spread when it's separated out like this. And for me, this is a quick way to clean stuff up. And I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Please leave some comments and let me know if there's any questions you have on this. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a great day.